Hey, how you doing guys? Welcome back to the show. Something I've wanted to do for a long time and just have a discussion is getting more aggression to the front end of your tone. Like there's so many ways to do it. I'm using the Marshall DSL 20H today and just going through some effects on the floor. I'm capturing it through the Two Notes Torpedo Capped X, just straight through the interface on Logic on the mat. So essentially what we have today, just the baseline tone that we're going to be working with is uh, I've got an EQ in the effects loop just to scoop out a little bit of the mids. So this is what we get just with the bass tone with nothing in the front end. Not a whole lot of aggression going on there. It's a pretty sort of dry, dull sort of tone. Nothing wrong with it, it's not a bad tone at all, it's just a little bit, it needs more. So uh, uh, so most of the time what people do to drive the front end of the amp and just focus things and get things a little bit tighter is to use a, an overdrive. And I've got the Zach Wild MXR and I've also got the SD1 Super Overdrive by Boss. And they're both really good, there's no real better one, it's just personal preference. I think the Boss one's really good because it's just so cheap, it's a third the price as the MXR. And so this is how I like to use the overdrive. I just have the drive right down and both the others on fairly neutral. Add a bit more drive to that. You can hear there when I add a little bit too much drive, things start to break up. It doesn't saturate, it just starts to get a little bit messy and it breaks up. So I like to just leave the gain right down and it just seems to tighten things. And the same is with the Zach Wild, same settings and all. This is the difference. I'll play the same riff just so you can compare. <laughs> And for the Zach Overdrive, if I want to push things a little bit more and just add a bit more aggression, I tend to just put the output up a little bit higher, add a bit more tone, and just the gain slightly. As you hear, the overdrives on their own work really good. They just sort of focus things a little bit better. Uh, you can find sweet spots with each OD, and the difference between those two is it's fairly negligible. I find the SD1 to be a little bit, uh, it loses a little bit of the bass, it adds a little bit more mid range, and it's a tad bit fizzier, whereas the Zach Wild MXR tends to be a little, uh, a bit beefier and has heavier chugs, I guess. Uh, but just moving on now. The next one we get to is the Gary Holt boost, which is, it's like a parametric EQ that just works on the mid frequencies, but there has been some bass frequencies added to it. Like it's, it's sort of set in different ways. And so for the Gary Holt boost to work best, it really needs to work in conjunction with an OD. And on the pedal board, this is how I run it, just downstream from it, from the guitar. And I like it working with the Boss SD1 and I'll just run through how it works. You pretty much just got the volume. This is the gain knob for the mid frequency, and this is the actual cue of the frequency itself. So we'll run through how it sounds and... I find the frequency knob here, as you turn it back, things start to get a little bit heavier with the bass and it's like a, the presence is going away as well. So as you add that to it, things will get choppier. Uh, 
Kakura, if they're from the new album, I'm, I'm excited about. Uh, but that's pretty much how I like this pedal to be set in the mix with, with those two and it just works really well and, and you get a nice aggressive tone that's, that's great for all Exodus riffs. <laughs> And on top of that, you've just got the peak switch here, which just adds a little bit more, but I prefer it when it's off. Um. And when it comes time to doing solos, I don't need to add anything more to it. I just turn up the reverb, I guess. And that's just a really cool sound. It's great for different metal. It's not just Exodus. Um, just riffs sound really heavy. So now it brings us to the MXR six band EQ. And this is just one of my favorites of all time. I've always used it to drive the front end of an amp. Uh, ever since I saw Kerry and Dime doing it back in the nineties in Guitar World magazine columns and things that I read. And it's just, it's just a really cool pedal. It's really diverse and you can push the frequencies you want. It doesn't cause things to get really broken up and really distorted. It just pushes those frequencies and just adds the right amount of aggression. And the way I like to use this making aggression is I, I take the bass down a little bit to just to make things really tight in the bottom end. Uh, I leave the trebles up a little bit, but mainly I'm just pushing the mids in the high mid region around the 800K. And this is about as extreme as I drive the pedal, but you'll hear it's just got a great tone. <laughs> And we'll just push it even more. Let's just see, we'll go maximum. I'm going to leave the bass down there because things will muddy up. But as we go maximum like this, it will just be a little bit more boxy in that mid range sort of quacky. <laughs> Wind up the bass a little bit just to make it a, a heavier sort of tone. <laughs> And it's a pretty diverse pedal. Like you're not just stuck pushing mids like this. This is the best way to drive it. I think it's, it's got the best tone when it's a little bit tighter and it was sitting back like it was. It doesn't need other pedals to work with. You don't need to run it with an OD. You can just to push it a bit more, but we'll see how that sounds. <laughs> I think if you run it with an OD like that, I think you need to push a little bit of the bass into it because the OD sucks those bass frequencies out at the start. So if we just wind a little bit more bass into it and the, and the low mids. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
cool. And uh, lastly brings us to the fort and grind. And I love this pedal. People say that you can create the fort and grind tone using an EQ in the front, but it's got its own flavor and its own tone and I can't recreate it in any way. And it's just, it's just super aggressive. You'll hear it now. <laughs> That is cool. It's just such an aggressive sounding pedal. As you wind it back though, it's like the, you lose a bit of that bass and just the intensity. I like it when it's three quarters up. It's just more fun. This is all about having fun. It's nothing else. It's just ripping your face off and having fun. Again, I don't think you need a change for a solo, just add some reverb. It's just a really versatile little stomp box. Sorry for the mistakes, but uh, such a cool solo too. And so righto guys, there you have it. That's uh, really awesome ways to get more aggression into the front end and just get more out of your amp and manipulate it the way you want it to. But uh, I just love those tones. It's really aggressive. It's really crunchy. It's just so much fun. And uh, all that being said, look, I, uh, I genuinely appreciate all the support that you guys have shown me, uh, especially from that last video. I wasn't sure how the channel was going to continue, but the reason the channel really is going, it's because of that love and support and all the care that you guys have. And uh, I truly am sorry for those that are going through similar experiences or loved ones doing the same. I, I really feel for you and I read every comment. I don't I was just overwhelmed with too much and I, I didn't know where to start to even respond to half of them. They're absolutely amazing. And uh, thank you all so much. The channel's definitely gonna continue. It's gonna go ahead full steam. We're just gonna work on tones and have lots of fun and tune in, subscribe, the whole bit. Love you guys, take care, see ya.